What's happening, family? It's time to pray. And we're going to look at Psalm 23 and verse number two on today as we continue our study on trust. We've been looking at trust through the lenses of David to grab somewhat of a theology, especially out of some of the Psalms that David has written. We've looked at Psalm 37 and verse 25 that serves sort of as a foundation for our thinking where David says, I've been young and now I'm old and yet I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his children begging for bread. Another Psalm that would reflect David's perspective, David's paradigm being from young and old would be Psalm 23. In Psalm 23, some has argued that David may have written this as a young shepherd. Some have also argued that David has written this now as a seasoned, aged shepherd in which he takes the posture of a sheep and God being his shepherd. And as God being his shepherd, David would reflect on the nature of the shepherd watching over, governing over, guiding and guarding and protecting him as a sheep. Either way, whether young or old, David's depiction of God is worthy of our, our understanding so that we understand what trust is all about. Remember that we've argued the trust is the complete and intense reliance on God that is that is inclusive of one's relationship with the Father, one's devotion to God's word, and one's remembrance of God's promises. And David has been showing us through this psalm the power of what it means to trust God. Psalm 23, I want to read it through, and then we're going to grab verse number two. We've already looked at verse number one. Remember in verse number one, we just grabbed the first four, the first four words out of the clause to argue on why God is trustworthy. The Lord, the one who creates everything, the unmoved mover of everything, the, the, the self-existent one who spoke the world into existence by his his word is currently, actively, powerfully, presently my possession, my personal possession. He is my shepherd. I know he's yours, but he is mine. And I'm so glad that he's mine. That God who is my shepherd is the one who's watching me, keeping me, guarding me. Therefore, watch the conclusion. I have everything that I need. But David's going to go a step further helping us to appreciate that there's even more to understanding why God is trustworthy and we'll grab it. I want to do this. I want to, uh, I want you to allow me a little bit of liberty as we are in verse number two in primarily, but we're going to grab some of the imagery out of verse number three and verse number four in particular to unpack a phrase. And I'm going to give it to you here in just a minute. Look at verse uh, Psalm 23 with me. Let's read it through. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me. In the presence of mine enemies, thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Beautiful psalm. And and, and in order to unpack the psalm, in verse number two in particular, he maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. I want to work from this notion, three, three major points in unpacking this text. He breaks me to make me, number one. He makes me to shape me, number two. He shapes me to secure me, number three. Again, from the motif of the sheep, looking at, gazing on, in dependence on the shepherd. One of the things you might want to remember about the nature of a shepherd and a sheep is that it comes through the dependency, the trust of a sheep to the shepherd and the ability for the shepherd to know that the trust is there with the sheep is that it comes over time. It comes as a relationship is built. It comes over the course 
of the sheep depending on hearing and honoring the word of the shepherd. Remember the definition of trust. Trust is the complete and intense reliance on God that is inclusive of one's relationship with the Father. Watch part two. One's devotion to God's word and one's remembrance of the promises of God. But one of the things that you and I have to hold on to because we are like David, taking the position of being the sheep in the eyes or in the in the care of the shepherd God. And we as we listen to, as we honor God, as we practice being trust trusting to God and God has not moved in being trustworthy that comes over the course of remembering and hearing that God's word when God the shepherd speaks when God moves he is worthy of trust and God is always trustworthy always reliable always able to be depended on our problem however is that like sheep we are hard-headed like sheep we are impulsive like sheep we are instinctive like sheep, we are um, um, moving about. Like sheep, we are hard-headed. Like sheep, sometimes we act more like goats than we do like sheep. Like sheep, we move after what we crave. We move after what's on our mind. We we are we are not able many times to remain focused and and, and consistent on the direction that the shepherd gives us. We will stray. We will do what we want. We will follow after our appetite. We'll follow after our carnality. We'll follow after our impulses. We'll follow after our proclivities. We will hang out with the wrong groups. We will do the wrong things. We will go the wrong places. We'll put ourselves in harm way. I hope I'm talking to some sheep. We will put ourselves in harm way. We'll do things that do not mean any good to us and then we'll wonder how the bad happens in our life. And so the shepherd in order to get the sheep to remember that what he says and the direction he's going and the area he's going is the right thing for the sheep, is the right word for the sheep, it's the right diet for the sheep, it's the right thing for the sheep to do, it's the right place for the sheep to go, it's the right boundaries to have in the life of the sheep, it's the right limitations to place on the sheep. What the shepherd does in order to get you to see that his shepherding is always is right he has a tool with him called the rod you'll notice in the text at verse number three and verse number four I believe it is in verse number four in particular he says the rod and the staff is with me now that's a different context but we're gonna come to that later but every shepherd would walk with the rod and the staff the staff is the long usually a uh, 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 tool that's used to walk through sometimes it's used to hold them up sometimes it's used to bring the sheep back from dangerous places but he also had that's the that's the staff that's the staff and so he uses that to move about but he has also a rod a rod was typically hung on his waist and the rod was more like a club. It was more like a tool that was used for up close beating off of wild animals and beating off of things that demanded a little bit more force. Every now and then, however, the shepherd would have to use the rod to deal with the sheep because the sheep in cases where they're not being uh, 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 those that would follow the voice of the shepherd, not being one who would trustingly stay in line with the shepherd, not being those who would honor the direction of the shepherd. Every now and then, the shepherd would have to use the rod to help the sheep to learn to be still. And so he would take the shepherd, those that were the, the, the rod, those sheep that were hard headed, those sheep that were moving about, those sheep that would not fall in line. And many times, what you would find is that the shepherd, according to something, uh, some of the ancient literature, he would take the rod and he would break one of the legs of the sheep so that they could not move around like they want to. He would break one of the legs and allow them to be still. He would break one of the legs so that they could not go where they want to go. He would break one of the legs and allow them to have to be isolated for a moment. He would break one of the legs and allow them to be still. He would break one of the legs and make them lie down. I hope you're in here with me. Now notice what we see. He breaks me to make me. And many times what we find is that God will allow the, the rod of God is permitting life to be a tool to shape our humility. We are allowed to suffer the lessons of life, to learn dependency. We are allowed to go through trouble, to go through trial, to go through challenges, to learn what it means to be made to, uh, to, to make, be made to be still. God 
God will allow every trouble. He will allow every trial. He will allow every challenge. He will allow every storm. It's used by God to break the non-following parts of us. Oh, I hope you hear this. What God does is he allows these moments to help us to be still. We need, you, you and I have to learn that we needed the breaking in order to finally hear the shepherd. We needed the breaking to know that his word is the right word. We needed the breaking to learn when he says go this way that that's where we go. We needed the breaking so that we would stop straying after our own appetites. Stop straying after our own impulses. Stop straying into an area where we are not with other sheep but we're hanging out with lions and wolves and dogs and all of those sorts of things. You, you need the breaking to not be by running vo boisterous, uh, uh, uncontrollable wet waters. You need the breaking to learn how to sat yourself down. Let me say it another way. You needed the setback to sit down. You needed the loss to slow yourself up. You needed the pain to finally gain some perspective. You needed the trial to learn how to kind of think things through. You needed that difficulty to cause you to have a little bit of a delay. You needed the fight to realize just how weak you actually are. You needed the desperation to depend on God. You needed the darkness to know that God is your light. You needed the storms so that you could finally hear the, the Savior speak to it. You needed isolation to to know God is all that you need. You needed the cold to feel his warmth. You needed the season to know how consistent your God is no matter what. In other words, you and I have to be broken in order to be made. He breaks me in order to make me. He maketh me to lie down. Can't you hear? You can hear James to remind us over and over again how God will permit life to serve as a rod in his hand to finally shape us, to finally get us to pay attention. I love James in verse number, chapter one, verses two through four. James says in that text, my friends choose to pray. I'm sorry, choose to stay happy. Even when all kinds of troubles come your way, because you know that endurance comes from dealing with the challenges you, you, to your trust in God. Let your endurance become as strong as possible so that you will be completely mature without any shortcomings. Or, And I love Paul. Listen to Paul. Paul helps us to appreciate the part of what God is doing out of removing all of the, the in, in, in encumbrances and removing all of the arrogant things and removing those aspects of the non-following parts of us is that God will allow you, hear me, God will allow life to cause you to fall flat on your face. He will allow life to cause you to be, to be removed from everybody who's eclipsed, who he is. He will allow life to cause you to get to a space in an area you've never been in. He will allow a COVID-like moment to get you isolated so that now, for the first time, you learn how to pray. Now, for the first time, you call on him. Now, you're opening up your Bible and hearing God speak. Now, you are in a space where it's nobody but him. God will allow the moments of your life, no matter what they may be. It might be sickness. It might be job loss. It might be the removal of friends. It might be a broken relationship. It might be you, you, you realizing that you're not all that you thought you could be. It might be you frustrated. It might be you being alone. It might be you having to deal with, with, with wickedness and evil over and over again. But he makes you, he breaks you in order to make you, I hear Paul saying, but his answer, when you asked to take it away, Lord, his answer, his answer was my grace is all you need. For my power is greatest when you are weak. I am, Paul talking, most happy then to be proud of my weaknesses in order to feel the protection of Christ's power over me. I am content with weakness, insults, hardships, persecutions, difficulties for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Notice he breaks me in order to make me. But can you see this? When God, when the shepherd allows life, the rod of life, to break you, to humble you, to chisel you, to lower you. Notice where he places you when you've been made to lie down. He maketh me to lie down in what? Green pastures. And he leadeth me beside still waters. I love this. Number two, he, number one, he breaks me to make me but he makes me to shape me. 
Why green pastures and still waters? What, what are you trying to teach us, Shepherd? <laughs> He's helping us to appreciate the green pastures indicate the healthy, the holy set apart, and the healing nature of how God provides. The still waters indicate the calm and the clear and the cool nature of what it means to drink from your God. It, it, see the imagery as a broken legged sheep and you've been made to lie down, but you're made to lie down while sitting in the lap of the shepherd and the shepherd is seated in a space where there's nothing but green pasture. He, he, he allows you to sit by his side and you can't move, but you're in a green pasture and you're by still water. All that you need is supplied by the shepherd. All that you consume is green pasture. All that you drink is from still, calm, cool, clear water. You, you can't be in a space where because he broke you and now you're sitting by his side, he allowed life to break you and you're sitting by his side. One of the things you'll learn is that the only thing this shepherd has ever given me is green pasture. The only thing this shepherd has ever allowed for me is still water. The green pasture is shaping the spiritual aptitude of the sheep in my brokenness. You can't run from the diet of God. Notice it's amazing how, how dependent we are when it hurts and when when we're drawn to God because it hurts, but it's also amazing in the same breath how, how, how we go to the worthless and the things that are not worthwhile when we call ourselves well and healthy. God may warn us. I think the text is indicating that the best posture to be is to remain broken so that you can continue to eat green pastures. Remain broken so that you consume that still water. Don't get so arrogant, so high-minded, so well that you will move off from where God is because we when you are made to sit with the pastor, when you are made to sit with the shepherd, all you consume is green pastures and still waters. Here, here what we learn here in the green pastures, we learn the consistency of our God. Again, the shepherd only provides that which is for your well-being. And I hear that going back over the nature of the word of God. All of the word of God is for our benefit. You go back and check out all of the scriptures. His word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. It's directing me. His word, I put it in my heart so that I don't sin against my creator. His word will never come back to him void. His word is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, helping me to make decisions. His word is the word that remains a foundation for me. His word allows my contemplation and my, my, my very speech to be in, in, intact. That's why the psalmist says, David says in another place, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Oh Lord, my rock and my redeemer. God is consistent. Only thing God can give you is good. By nature, he is good. By nature, he is loving. So we learn why we've been made to sit still. That God is a good God. We see his consistency, but we also learn of his care. The shepherd has promised, I'm not going to leave you. That's why he's with you when you're broken. He's with you in your loss. He's with you in your pain. He's with you in the difficulty. He's with you in the fight. He's with you in your desperation. He's with you in the darkness. He's with you in the storms. He's with you in isolation. I love when you go back over the scriptures, you see God's care, God's ridiculous care, a God who's omniscient, omnipresent everywhere at the same time, holding the world together, controlling your heartbeat, my breath, and, and our blood flow all at the same time. Yet he can meet Elijah in his depression, hiding in a cave. Yet he can meet Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego walking through fire. Yet he can meet Daniel in the lion's den. Yet he can meet Noah in the throes of preaching for 120 years for a group of people who will not believe him. He can meet Hagar. He can meet all of these individuals throughout scripture going through the things that they are going through, all of the frustrations and the desperations. He can have the ability to be everywhere at the same time and yet he's with you while you are wondering what you're going to do now without my father. What are you going to do now without my mother? What are you going to do now without your loved one? What are you going to do now that you're starting over again? What are you going to do now on a new job? What are you going to do now in a new situation? What are you going to do now when your health has defined you? What are you going to do now when you've lost loved one after loved one? What are you going to do now when it 
just seems like the world would never be the same. Your God is with you and he's keeping you. Why? Because he's consistent and he cares. And then what I love else about the shepherd is that while you are in this green pasture by the still waters, he will cover you. He'll make sure that you are there. You drink from water. That's not moving rapidly to waft up into your, your wool and pull you down and drown you. No, you're drinking from still waters. You're drinking from pasture land that's green and plush and the best you can have. I've got you covered, God says. I got you covered from what you need to intake. But watch, I also have you covered in your thinking. You are with me. Your heart rate never has to increase because I'm right here caring for you. I know that the wound hurts. I know that the pain is resonant. I know that it's difficult, but I've got you covered. I'm with you and nothing will hurt you. No enemy, no, no thing on the outside. Can't you hear Paul say that I am persuaded that neither height nor death, nor angel, nor principality, things present, things to come can ever separate me <laughs> from the love of my God. I'm like right here laying in the pastures. He broke me in order to make me, but while he's making me, oh, he's shaping me. He's shaping my love for his word. He's shaping my devotion to who he is. He's shaping my trust. He's shaping my relationship. Because when I look back, I know that the only consistent person in my life out of every person in my life is God. I know that the only person who's cared for me, no matter how ugly it's been, no matter how worth, rough my life has been, no matter how much I messed up, is my God. The only person who kept me covered like nobody else, covered me from the shameful things, covered me from my reproach, covered me when I needed him, covered me to make sure I had all that I need is my God. He makes me to shape me. But then number three, he shapes me to secure me. The goal of the shepherd in allowing the rod to break me is to form trust within me. Trust is the complete and intense reliance on God that is inclusive of one's relationship with the Father, one's devotion to God's word, and one's reliance or remembrance on the promises of God. When I'm, when I'm, when I'm seated in the lap of the shepherd, I'm able to realize that while I've been with him, all I've ever had was green pastures and still water. See, left to myself, I'd eat the wrong thing. I'd visit the wrong places. I'd put myself in harm's way. I would place my life in the crosshairs of danger because, but because Jehovah is my shepherd, he not only knows me, he knows what's best for me. And when I get what's best for me, it fosters trust within me. Did y'all catch that? Because Jehovah is our shepherd, he not only knows you, he knows what's best for you. And when you and I know what's best for us, it, it fosters trust within us. What's the point, Thomas? The point is, trust the shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures, and he will lead me beside still waters. In other words, he breaks me to make me. He makes me to shape me, and he shapes me to secure me. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We thank you and we honor you for being our God. We thank you so much for being a God who watches over us as your sheep. Thank you, Father, for allowing us to grow in our confidence and our understanding of who you are. Thank you, Father, for fostering in us, growing in us a spirit of dependence on you. God, I thank you for allowing the rod of life to break us so that we can be made to be still. Thank you, Father, for allowing all of our trials, our setbacks, the things that we've gone through. Thank you, Father, for the cold, the isolation, the storms, the darkness. Thank you for the fights that we've gone through, the pain and the trials. Thank you for our desperation. Thank you, Father, for the losses. Thank you for the pain. Thank you, Father, for the difficulties. Thank you for the trials. Thank you for every season that we've gone through because it's demonstrated, Lord God, that as you have allowed the rod of life to break us, it makes us, Lord God, and it's making us in order to shape in us 
an understanding of who you are, an understanding of your consistency, an understanding of your care, an understanding of your covering nature. Father, you are absolutely amazing. You are awesome as our shepherd. You are the only entity in our life that we can truly and completely trust and rely on. God, we ask that you bless us in the process to realize as you are fostering in us even right now, as we reflect on all of what we've gone through, an understanding that the only thing you have ever provided for us is green pastures and still waters. Help us to see it over the soundtrack of our life. Help us to not even right now, Father, be so rebellious or hard-hearted that we miss the ways that what your word has said has always been the best word for us. Help us to realize, Lord God, that when we honor you, when we follow you, when we depend on your word, the only thing we can have is plush green pastures, still waters that allow us to know that we can completely and intensely rely on you because of our relationship, because of our devotion to your word, and because of our remembrance of your promises. And thank you for promising that you never leave us. You never forsake us. Thank you for promising that you will heal and deliver. Thank you for promising that you will save us. Thank you for promising that you will always provide everything that we need. Thank you for being our shepherd. Father, we pray even right now that you continue to heal, strengthen, and renew and help us to live every moment just for you. And we will be careful to give you all the praise, all the glory, in all the honor, for truly it belongs to you. We ask this, Lord God, not because of who we are, but because you are an awesome shepherd. And in the name of Jesus, we together say and we together pray, amen and amen. Listen, continue to trust in God. Trust is the complete and intense reliance on God that is inclusive of one's relationship with the Father, one's devotion to his word, and one's remembrance of the promises of God. Listen. I'm going to pray for you. I'm asking you, please pray for me and let's watch our God change everything around us. God bless you and God keep you. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm.